The key to success in working a lot of chemistry problems is the factor label or dimensional analysis method. And hopefully you're getting this early in your chemistry experience because it will help you in your calculation. The method that we're using now is called the factor label. It keeps us from having to memorize so many formulas. The emphasis here is on label, and label means units. You must keep your units. A value without the appropriate units is very often considered to be incorrect. Here's a sample. Calculate the volume of 1.8 cubic feet in cubic meters. I hope you haven't memorized a whole lot of conversions from English to metric. There are really only about three that you need to know. I would say start out with 1.8 cubic feet. Put this in parentheses and cube it. Now we can multiply by 2.54 centimeters per inch. But oh, wait a minute. We have cubic inches. So we're going to have to have cubic inches here. So once again, put it in parentheses and cube it. Then we multiply that by meters over 100 centimeters, 100 centimeters and a meter. But wait a minute. We have centimeters here, and we have cubic centimeters in the previous expression. So we have to cube it again. Canceling our units, we see cubic feet now cancels cubic feet. Inches cancels inches, cubic inches, that is. Cubic centimeters cancels cubic centimeters, and the unit that we're going to be left with is cubic meters. And it's just that easy. It is perfectly all right to manipulate units in this fashion and you're not having to memorize a number of expressions as you go from English to metric. Now here's a good problem. How many milliliters are in two teaspoons of water? Well, I don't know what all you've learned about English to metric, but if you've learned that there are about two and a half, no, no, if you've learned that there are about five milliliters in a teaspoon, then you know the answer here should come out to be about 10. Let's see if it does. What are you going to use for a connection from English to metric? Well, I'm going to use 946.3 milliliters per quart in this problem. That's the only connection I've memorized from English to metric for volume. It just works so well to get there from most any place that I start. So the process then that I'm going to use is this. I'm going to start with teaspoons go over to quarts, convert quarts to milliliters, and I will be at my destination. So here goes. Two teaspoons. Did you know that there are three tablespoons in a teaspoon? Well, if you didn't, that's something you really ought to know. There are three ta teaspoons in a tablespoon. So now I've converted to tablespoons. Do you wonder where I'm going? Hang on. Teaspoons cancel, and I'm now at tablespoons. Times a cup for 16 tablespoons. Did you know there are 16 tablespoons in a cup? That is a really, really handy thing to know. And of course, I would expect you to know the English system. So tablespoons cancel. And now I'm at cups times quart per four cups. You knew there were four cups in a quart, didn't you? And so cups cancel times 946.3 milliliters per quart. And now quarts cancel. And I am left with milliliters. And working this out, I came out with 9.86 milliliters. Yep, pretty close to 10 milliliters, isn't it? Brought to you courtesy of Chemistry Professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website 
on the World Wide Web at chemistryprofessor.com.